Here is what you missed this morning on the Catholic Morning Show. Let's go right now to Catholic evangelist, author, biblical scholar. Good morning, Jeff Cavins. Good morning from the north. How are you? I'm I'm fantastic, and uh, we are looking so forward to your uh, to your time here. That's coming. It's it's been too long since you've been to uh, Central Iowa. The you'll be here at the Christ Our Life Conference at the end of September. September 28th, 29th is the event. Uh, how are you doing? It, uh, life has been busy for you. It has been. Yeah, it's um, it's busy, but it's a good busy. You know, been focusing on. Um, producing some more things for the great adventure. We have uh, pilgrimages, my wife and I uh, lead, and uh, getting ready for a, a year of teaching at the seminary in the Twin Cities, St. Paul Seminary. Oh, very good. And uh, uh, your students will be uh, fortunate to have you because of your your love of Scripture. And uh, that's a, maybe the first place I want to jump off this morning is when did you when did you fall in love with Scripture? I fell in love with Scripture back when I was 18 years old, and I started to date my wife now, Emily. And, you know, I was in school. I was in, actually in college in a kind of a, a two-year period of preparing myself for whatever I was going to do in my life. And, and I ended up meeting Emily, and that led to uh, uh, listening to her relationship with the Lord and her mother's. And I would go over to their house every day after after my classes, and I would sit at the kitchen table and listen to her mother talk about Jesus and the kingdom of God, and all the while using Scripture. And there was something about the way she was using Scripture and then living her life that, uh, and Emily that attracted me. And so there was a real drawing. But the first time that I was drawn to Scripture was when I was about 13 years old and I was confirmed. Uh, that was 1971, and I remember it very, very clearly because that night I had a uh, St. Joseph edition of the Bible given to me, the confirmation, and I put it on my end table in my in my bedroom, and I looked at it and thought, wow, I, I want to read the whole thing. And so I figured I would, and I started at Genesis, and I think I probably got to about 20 verses or so <laughs> and stopped. But that was the first time that I was... Uh, the, I was co- cognizant of this draw to it. So, but this, uh, the, so ultimately, though, the, your love of scri- scripture actually took you away from the Catholic faith. Uh, talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I, I ended up, uh, you know, studying scripture. Went to Bible college in, te- in Dallas, Emily and I did Dallas, Texas, and uh, just continued on. And it was after uh, Bible college there, I went to uh, broadcasting school for radio and, and television. And my first job was in Valley City, North Dakota. And it was there that I ended up leaving the Catholic Church. Scripture was a part of it, I would say. But more than anything, I really felt loved out of the church. That was what I mean by that is that there were people in uh, an Assembly of God church locally there in Valley City that really took an interest in me, loved me, invited me to be a part of their Bible study. And one thing led to another, and I... I became really disillusioned with the church. I became disillusioned with Catholics because I didn't see them doing the things that I thought were really important at the time, which was witnessing, um, reading the Bible, praising God, opening your home for fellowship, uh, hanging around other Christians uh, that that love the Word of God. And so I just left. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I left. I yelled at a bishop publicly and told him I'm out of here. Wow. So. Well, and and I know ultimately a part of your conversion too is it is that study of scripture that led you back into Catholic faith, into the Catholic uh, faith because of a uh, the recognition that you know you can't have the sacred uh, word without the sacred tradition to to, to help uh, decipher right. what uh, you know some of the aspects of it. Talk about that real quick, and then uh, I, I got another question I want to jump to. But talk about that understanding that you sure. came to. Well, you know, I the, the the thing that I was really interested in when I was a pastor, I was a pastor for 12 years, was I was interested in the early church. And so there was a, a real focus in my life on studying the Jewish backgrounds to the to the gospel, uh, to look at the, the Jewish Jesus, the rabbi uh, within his within his culture. And what and I was really interested in what did the first 
few generations of Christians sound like? What do they look like? What did they believe? And those are the church fathers. And as I studied them, and they're very important because they're, they're so closely related to what Jesus taught. Uh, but when I studied them, I realized that the church I was pastoring didn't look anything like that early church. In fact, we did not share in common with that early church really anything that we were doing. We'd get together, we would have a service, we would praise God, and we'd have a reading of Scripture, and we would have a pet, you know, a, a message given by myself, maybe an altar call, and that was pretty much week after week. But that didn't look anything like the early church with the Eucharist, uh, the Blessed Virgin Mary, the papacy. Um, and and the and we I realized that that the word of God to the early church wasn't just scripture alone, but it was sacred tradition, as Thessalonians tells us. You know, Paul says, "Obey what we have uh, given you, the traditions we have given you, whether it's written or orally." So that was a real wake up call to me, and that was also the way that the Jewish community viewed the Word of God, and that was that they believed that Moses received the written word on, on uh, Mount Sinai, but they also believed that, that Moses received an oral Torah, oral law at Mount Sinai. So this idea of the Word of God being Scripture and tradition isn't a Catholic idea. It is the idea of the kingdom of God, whether it be in the Old Testament or the New Testament. Mm. I hate that, uh, that our segments here are so short because there's so many ways I want to go with you. We've got about three minutes left with uh, Jeff Cavins, a uh, biblical scholar who will be with us for the uh, Christ Our Life uh, conference coming up in September. But I know you, you began the development of the, the Bible timeline uh, that, that you're, you're so well known for you, as a Protestant. Uh, the question I want to get to here is if, if, if you could go back and talk to Protestant Jeff as you were developing this, this timeline, and tell, tell, tell Protestant Jeff that it was actually going to be the foundation for the uh, largest Catholic uh, you know, evangelization effort as it, as, it, as, it, as it speaks to the Bible, what, what would your thoughts have been? Well, I, that's, a, that's a good question. I, I guess I would, I would have said to that, you're asking about what I would say to that younger Jeff? Yeah, yeah. I, I would say that... Uh, uh, spend more time on the Word of God, and and like in the reading tomorrow that we're going to have, you know, in the in the church, major on the majors, don't major on the minors, and don't be, you know, have a an attitude of the majors should be treated as minor. In other words, mm. give yourself to the weightier things. Give yourself really to go deep into God's Word and make a point of it. To, to know the story of salvation history and really go deep with it, because that becomes the foundation for living and for uh, revelation and for direction and correction uh, in your life. I would say, you know, give less time to trivial things and more time to that which is really enduring and, and important. Well, as I said, I can't probably say uh, enough about the impact that the uh, Great Adventure series has had on on people. Of course, it was the uh, foundation for the Bible in a year uh, that Father Mike Schmitz. Uh, can, can you tell us real quick just how that all came together and, uh, you know, maybe what your initial reactions are in the, in the last minute and a half or so? Sure. Well, with Father and I, Father Mike and I have been friends for close to 20 years, something like that. And, you know, he's been a big fan of the Great Adventure. And and so when the idea came up, which was his idea, to take the whole year and go through the Bible in a year and give some com- – I would give commentary and he would give the daily. Uh, when we decided on that, the obvious thing was, well, let's use the Great Adventure reading program and expand it for the entire year. And he will give the daily, and then I'll come in with each of the 12 periods of salvation history, and I'll make sure that the listener is on target. They're, they know the next section that they're going into. What are the main people, the main events of that period? And so it really worked out very well. And we had no idea what the outcome would be, and we were surprised ourselves. But I think that that is the Holy Spirit drawing people to Jesus, and that's the, that's the primary work, and the credit goes to God. 
Well, it's uh, you, can, you can learn more about Jeff Cavins, his work. He's got a podcast. He's got a, a, a multitude of, of resources. JeffCavins.com is the website. Uh, Jeff, we will look forward to seeing you in September. And, uh, yeah, like I say, it's been too long since we, we've gotten you back here to central Iowa, even though Minnesota is not that far away. Uh, we're definitely going to be looking forward to it. Uh, well, anything we should well, be uh, – yeah, yeah, go last ahead. Night I, last night I was uh, at the uh, Indiana Fever game with uh, – sat right behind – Caitlin Clark's parents wow. and watch the game. Had a lot of fun. Iowa Minnesota connections everywhere you turn. It seems like uh, <laughs> e- even in our show today, there's uh, our earlier story included a, a priest that's going to be a Nigerian priest who's been assigned to, to Minnesota who will be down here uh, in, in a couple of days. So uh, great to have right. you on this morning, Jeff. We'll, we'll look Thanks. forward to seeing you here in about a month. All right. God bless. God bless. Listen to the Catholic Morning Show weekday mornings at 7 on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network, iowacatholicradio.com, or the Iowa Catholic Radio app.